Let me first to start with really sincere congratulations for the anniversary, which is actually 50 plus one, as we all know, but uh, it is impressive period of collaboration, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, sometimes maybe uh, less visible, but still basically important for each national, uh, let's say, constituencies, but also for the European one. Uh, National Geological Survey, I think in many, many states, was one of the first nature considering surveys and services historically. Uh, obviously because of the raw materials, ores, etc., it has very long history. Uh, but uh, it is still and will remain for the future, as I will be speaking, indispensable for national governments and as well for the higher level um, source of unbiased expertise, geoscientific expertise, the information which is just crucial for well-being, economy, many other aspects. Now we are coming to the period, and I think this is also the title of the conference today, where we are living uh, in situation where we can witness, in my view, groundbreaking principal change in the looking on our relation with the global ecosystem. Politically, it is called Green Deal. But Green Deal, despite of being called green, is in many aspects dependent on what we know about geo part of the story and there is a, a role for the national geological surveys or services and i will only mention few of them ah, i should come to slides i forgot completely <coughs> the major story of today is tackling the climate change and for that we have to decarbonize. It would be quite funny to say that in order to decarbonize, among others, we have to look for some good reserves of carbon because we need to use it in that, in that process. So uh, obviously uh, the story of decarbonization has many facets. The first one is to address what is causing the most of the problem, and this is the uh, energy. Uh, and therefore, uh, when we come back to uh, substance uh, of your work, uh, one of the important elements is looking for effective harnessing of geothermal energy, which is really underused. Uh, if we look uh, on European, I have been four years uh, representing European Commission in Slovakia. Most probably Slovakian colleagues are here. And we have been always discussing uh, that there is so many opportunities for using the geothermal energy and it's absolutely unused yet. And the answer was always, it was too expensive compared to others, particularly to the coal, which is, you know, subvented so then it is cheap, and infrastructure is there, etc., etc., etc. But I think the time of much broader use of geothermal energy is coming. And uh, this is also not only from the point of view of decarbonization, but it is also from the point of view of geopolitical security. I mean, what is in our territory makes us less dependent on whatever may be in the other territories. And I think this way of thinking is now more important than ever before. The second area where I'm quite sure, and you are very well aware, uh, where uh, uh, the strong development uh, can be uh, seen already is uh, the, all the intelligence, all the information, all the data on critical raw materials. The demand is rocketing uh, with a new uh, technologies 
And uh, here I would like to mention that this is not only about, let's say, I don't know if I use the right term, but it's not only about exploring the new elements, that's obviously also important, but it is also about much better, broader and interconnected use of existing data. And it was already mentioned here that uh, the, 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 the joining the databases and working together is a part of the work of this association. Then we have problem with carbon dioxide, something what the living world needs to survive, actually. The photosynthesis is dependent on carbon dioxide, but everything, if it is too much, is too much. And uh, you, can, you can help uh, with that. So carbon dioxide sequestration uh, in subsurface structures is certainly an area which again is getting from the category theoretical and too expensive into category needed and possible. And uh, that means uh, a lot of work in, in coming time. And then uh, I have here also an option because in the situation in which we are, it is more or less clear that we cannot avoid, uh, at least for some period, uh, to count uh, further with nuclear energy generation. And this is always connecting, connected with the radioactive waste. So this is another element where, I mean, we have to look on to repositories which will be say, not only safe, but also acceptable by general public. And this is obviously a big problem in many, many member states uh, and other states, including my own. And because I know that geologists, I mean, I, I share with you one thing, and this is love in maps. So I have here now three slides which, which just demonstrate what I said on the example of the Czech Republic, and always there is a small map at least, uh, and uh, I have to say that when I was a minister, that was actually the time when, you know, my good friend and probably known to you, Zdenek Venera, the director of our geo service, has been appointed as a director, so we have a very close personal link, you know. And uh, uh, I was always a very happy guest to the Czech Ge Ge Geological Survey. For managing the ecosystems, all this, what is done there, all the information, all the maps, are actually the critical background information. So uh, I, I have a very strong sympathy for all what is done by geology services. And here, uh, now linked to what I already mentioned, uh, three examples. The first one is actually about the geothermal energy the applied research which have been implemented or is implemented in Czech Republic. The Czech Geological Survey is a leader of new geothermal project which is called Synergies. Litomnežice is a center of that which is, we, we call it this for some reason in the central Bohemia. It doesn't look too central, but if you know that all this is actually Moravia, then it's more or less you can say central Bohemia. We are also dealing with a big problem today when speaking about the alternative energies, how to store the energy. So also the thermal energy storage is a, a very, very important uh, um, uh, part of discussion today. The production of green H2 and its storage, etc., etc. So this is one project from the Czech Republic. The other one, and this is actually the kind of maps I would assume the geologists like to see. And this is the assessment of critical raw materials potential in Czech Republic. I have seen the maps in the coffee room and I was quite happy to see the, the, the relatively you know, prominent part of information coming from the Czech territory. Obviously this is thanks to our geological history. Nevertheless, uh, <coughs> there is a uh, uh, clearly growing need for the raw materials and, and, and maybe also the new approach and new assessment to, to our knowledge which we already have. And the process is actually not that recent because it started by Commissioner Verhoegen's uh, initiative already in 2008. 
but uh, uh, we are now focusing on the elements which are relevant to the new technologies and new solutions like lithium, like uh, uh, rather rare earth elements, like uh, the data about nickel, copper and cobalt ores in Czech Republic. And I think you will be in, in, in the conference here presenting probably many similar results from many parts of the Europe. The third one is one where I have actually a personal, personal history because uh, the CCS as a, as, a, as a concept is relatively old, but in 2003, 2004, I was first time proposing that we should use, you know, the uh, uh, areas where it was actually the gas and oil mining in the past in the Moravia as a place where we can actually store carbon dioxide. And that time I was told that this is a nice dream, but it will never happen because it is extremely expensive. Okay, like 15 years later or, or so, we already have a concrete applications which are ongoing in, uh, in the large cement uh, factory in Moravia using actually this option. And we have this project which allows uh, us to discover which are the further options uh, for the geological storage of carbon dioxide and the ongoing flagship projects which is called CO2 Spicer and you see the name has the, the, the goal to prepare uh, 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 this uh, storage uh, pilot in depleted oil and gas um, uh, field in Southeast Moravia uh, to basically extend the practical utilization of this option. And the cooperation there is broader. It is not only Czech national service in, in included, but there is a close co collaboration with Norwegian partners. So these three uh, elements just illustrate what is happening in the area of geosurveys in Europe. And uh, obviously, if we had to speak about 50 plus one years of collaboration, uh, it will be a very long presentation and I will gladly leave that to Professor Watzel, who will be certainly speaking about that. Uh, and. Uh, I just want to highlight the ongoing developments or achievements, and these are actually uh, the important uh, achievements at the European level, the Aeronet project GeoERA, which was completed in 2022, and, and probably the most important launching of the project or uh, action within Horizon Europe uh, for creation of geological service for Europe. Now, coming to almost end of my introduction, let me to mention uh, some of uh, expectations which I see or which we see. I actually forgot to say that I have to pass the greetings of uh, my minister, uh, Mrs. Hubachkova, who is chairing the Environmental uh, Council. Uh, still, but she's stepping down for the health reasons, so she could not be here in person. Uh, and um, uh, this is, therefore, I'm mentioning that because what I'm saying here is obviously also set in the name of the ongoing Czech presidency. So, uh, when we speak about the future of geological service for Europe, the expectations are obviously, as I mentioned, the energy transition, which will require uh, a lot of critical raw materials. We have to address the threat of replacing one dependency by another dependency. So, I mean, we have to look on how much we are able to uh, avoid, you know, replacing dependency on oil and coal to dependency on the raw materials from China or elsewhere. Uh, we have uh, to much broader, and I expect we will much, as I said, use the geothermal energy as reliable and stable source, and as I said, which is also able to use already 
at least partly already existing uh, heating and infra infrastructure and, and save a lot of other energy sources. Uh, Obviously, I didn't speak about the water and groundwater, but this is an uh, essential element which is important all the time. Uh, we have changes in the water cycle which are caused by the climate change. The saturation of the sources is uh, in many places uh, endangered, so the protection by all means and uh, the, 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 the vice dealing with uh, uh, these uh, sources is actually uh, uh, incredibly important and I think also requires in this particular case this is less local than let's say the sources of ores. It is interconnected system which requires the international collaboration. Uh, and then there are the elements like subsurface management of smart cities uh, where the expertise of geological surveys is obviously a key. Uh, a lot of information needed in order to be to be to be able to do the proper and wise decisions. And then, what I said at the uh, during the presentation, the maps and models, which are actually crucial uh, uh, in many aspects, uh, uh, and this requires. And I think myself, as a soil biologist, I always like to explain to audience how important is a basic research for applied research. You cannot have applied research without the data coming from basic. I have full understanding for that. And I think that now we have another, let's say, good reason to, to support that also in the uh, geological survey era. So to conclude, once more, congratulations to 50 years. Uh, all the best for the next 50. You are bringing a highly important part of solutions for the societies. And um, I believe that uh, Geological Survey of Europe will be creating important bridge between science and policy. This is an issue which we are solving everywhere, actually. Uh, there is so much known in science. And it comes to the policy usually with a strong delay. I don't know how is it in geology. In biology, it is 20 plus years. So what is established in the science, in biology, ecology, comes to policy as a novel after 20 years and more. I hope that in geology, it will be better, uh, and we should try to do it. Uh, and I be believe that in mutual collaboration, uh, you will be able even more support all the important efforts, not only of individual countries, but also of uh, broader international, uh, let's say, discussion, obviously European Union, but also beyond. Thank you very much and congratulations once more.